Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 2 of Q&A series with Suresh GP. Now as we start to look at DevOps capabilities, the next question comes as part of what are some of the common DevOps practices? So typically there are about 7 DevOps practices. The first one is what we call as continuous development. So this practice primarily means that right from planning and coding phases of the cycle making sure that we do version control of your piece of code that is going into production so it is continuously looking at all the planning and coding phases the next one is what we call as continuous integration and that's a word that we use called ci so one of the issues that we used to have is when you have multiple developers <coughs> focusing on releasing a particular feature there might be some code merging issues there could be some version control issues so continuous integration is a mechanism where developers check in the piece of code into a central repository and make sure that there is absolute completeness in terms of accuracy of the code prevent code merging issues and prevent defects from passing downstream so essentially continuous integration is a mechanism to shift left improve the quality of the code before it can move to the next phases the next one we call is continuous delivery now please remember continuous delivery does not mean you deliver every day it only means that you can release it when it is required what does it mean for example If you want to release a particular feature by March first week, earlier we used to put the piece of code into that central repository, and then we hope everything is 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 good. So if it was a release on March first, February twenty eighth, I put the piece of code and hope and pray everything works well. But nowadays, with the level of sophistication that is available, we deploy the piece of code. into production that means you put your binaries into the production server well ahead of time let's say 15 days before and this is something like a dark launch that means i don't expose the piece of code to the users but i just deploy the piece of code and once it's done i focus on making this possible to check everything is working on the back end and once everything is okay you click on a button that starts appearing in an element called uh, production where people are able to see that's called continuous delivery the next one that we call it as is continuous deployment now continuous deployment means right from the code commit till deployment everything is automated that means there is no manual intervention required in the piece of how we work now this is possible in organizations like amazon where they do deployments every 11.2 seconds so the only way that you can do this entire process is to automate the pipeline the pipeline is nothing but you have your design your build your test your deployments phases you automate that in a manner completely and that is called continuous deployment please remember if you are a financial institution and banking um, and regulatory compliance becomes much more tougher continuous deployment might not be a possibility so you need to pick and choose what is applicable in the context of your own organization that you work with the next one is what we call as continuous testing so throughout your life cycle the more amount of testing you do the better the quality of the product and feature so the essential elements is that you can have a lot more testing right right from unit testing your integration testing your stress testing your regression testing there is multiple modes and one of the areas of continuous testing is to look at test automation gone are the days that you looked at test cases specific to a particular code piece now there are sophisticated tools like selenium that will help us to build a gap and move it forward much more faster the next practice is what we call as continuous monitoring So let's say you developed a piece of code the software and deploy it into production you start gaining to monitor 
those thresholds. So it could be your infrastructure monitoring, it could be your application monitoring in terms of their thresholds, CPU utilizations, input output. So that's so important because that tells you how reliable your systems are. So continuous monitoring is a mechanism to monitor both your infrastructure and applications so that it performs as desired. So sometimes people say that we are onto cloud, so everything should be picture perfect. Now, if your application crashes uh, every time you hit uh, 10,000 users, then your system is not reliable. So even if you put it onto the cloud, it's not going to help. So continuous monitoring is a way to look at some of the weakness in the system and provide opportunities to improve reliability of the system. And the last but not the least is infrastructure as a code. See, many of the times when you provision environments, um, we used to do it in a more manual manner. Now, with the sophistication of uh, tools like Docker, Kubernetes, or OpenShift, we can provide infrastructure as a code. Like you can give you the specifications and then you can build it on runtime. So that eases out the necessity of spending a lot of time to spin new servers, new databases and stuff, because right now, it's all into containers. You write the code once and run anywhere else. So infrastructure as a code is more about provisioning our infrastructure, a server, storage, network, database on runtime, which is much more being more efficient in how we manage. So these practices of what we call as continuous development, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous testing, continuous monitoring, and infrastructure as code are some of the seven practices of DevOps. So I hope today we learned about how do we uh, understand the DevOps practices. You find this one pretty useful and I will see you in our next episode in more detail on the DevOps space. Put in your comments if you have specific questions that you want me to address and I will pick it up in our rest of the episodes. I hope you enjoy this episode and please forget not to subscribe to the channel so that you get posted about the regular updates. I look forward to seeing you all and I wish you a great success in your agile and DevOps journey. Thank you.